In this module, we'll be exploring the purpose and structure of learning outcomes. By the end of the module, you'll be able to write learning outcomes for your first day of class that are observable, measurable, and that reflect the enduring understandings that your students need to learn in order to pursue success in your course. This module consists of three elements. The video presentation, there is additional resource material posted on Cairo, and a quiz. You should start with this video. As you're watching it, you may encounter some content that isn't clear to you. So feel free to stop the video at any time and check out those resources on Cairo. You can use them to follow up on specific questions that you have after watching the video as well. Or you may be directed to them for additional reading if you have problems with a quiz question. Hi, I'm Linda Yates Cameron, and I'm a facilitator and designer for the Teacher Education Program. I've been working with Loretta Howard on this program since 2010 when we first started the design of TEP. When I'm not working for CMCC, I'm teaching full-time in the Human Resources Program at Sheridan College. I've been working in the college system since 1990, teaching human resources and doing a lot of projects in both program and faculty development. I'm looking forward to working with you on this curriculum module. So let's get started and figure out these things called learning outcomes. These are the learning outcomes for this online module. The quiz will be measuring the first three learning outcomes listed on this visual. The final learning outcome we are going to write together as part of this video experience. You'll get another opportunity later to demonstrate that you can write learning outcomes when you prepare your lesson plan for the first day of class. You'll remember this diagram from the video on the backward design model. Learning outcomes are the starting point of all good curriculum design. They clearly state the essential and enduring knowledge, skills, and attitudes that students need to demonstrate in their learning process. This provides both you and the students with a clear understanding of what success looks like in the learning experience. Furthermore, the learning outcomes will drive both the design of your assessment and evaluation strategies, which in turn will help you to decide on the appropriate learning strategies. Learning outcomes tell you, your students, and potential employers what successful students can do by the end of a learning experience. Specifically, they define the type and the depth of learning that students are expected to achieve. They provide an objective benchmark for your evaluation and assessment of learning. They clearly communicate your expectations to the learners and provide great information to prospective employers. And finally, you can use them to guide and organize both yourself and the learners. There are six characteristics of well-written learning outcomes. We will spend some time working through the first four criteria outlined on this visual. So let's just take a minute to talk about the last two. If you haven't heard of Benjamin Bloom before, the work that he did around defining the types of learning that happens in education is critical to the development of well-written learning outcomes. The first part of Bloom's work was in the identification of three domains in which learning happens. The cognitive domain, represented by the head, which looks at the knowledge and facts that form much of our learning. The psychomotor domain, as represented by the hand, that includes the skills we learn. And finally, the affective domain, represented here by the heart, which looks at the attitudes and beliefs that we learn. All are important to the development of competent chiropractors, so the learning outcomes that we will write may integrate these different domains of learning. Bloom also identified that there are different levels of learning in each of these domains. At the bottom of this chart are the lower order skills for each domain of learning. As learners expand their understanding of the topic, they'll be able to move from lower order skills to the higher order skills. 
There's a great resource on Cairo called Writing Learning Outcomes, which was written by the British Columbia Institute of Technology. On pages 5 through 7, they've created charts that look at each of these domains of learning and the various levels of learning in each domain. In addition, they've provided examples of verbs that we can use to represent the different levels of learning in our learning outcomes. But don't let me get ahead of myself. Let's take some time to talk about how to format a learning outcome. The first step in writing learning outcomes is to create lead-in language. This language can be modified to represent where the learning is taking place. So is it part of a program, a course, or a lesson? The nice thing about the lead-in language we've shown here is that it forces you to start your learning outcome with a verb. And not just any verb will do. When you choose a verb, you want to make sure that it's observable. Often we want to use words like know, comprehend, value, enjoy. All great words, but not things that we can observe our students doing. On the other hand, students can list, create, compare, explain, advocate, and manipulate under guidance. All great choices for verbs to start our learning outcomes as we design evaluation tools to measure their abilities to do these things. Once again, if you want a great resource of verbs, check out that document I talked about by the British Columbia Institution of Technology. Okay, so step three, describing the desired performance. It doesn't sound hard, but think really hard before you go here. What's the performance that you're going to be evaluating? Once you've clearly identified that, it should be at the beginning of the statement. For example, if you were teaching students to complete a client intake form using Word, which of these learning outcomes would be correct? What's the most important performance that you want to see? If you answered number two, good job. Answer number one is not a bad learning outcome, but it's better suited to a technology program where using Word is the important performance, not completing the form correctly. The last step is to add in any conditions or criteria that will impact on the performance. So let's go back to our first example. Um, in that one, using Word is a condition. If they can't collect and store the information digitally, then they haven't successfully demonstrated the learning outcome. I've put a second learning outcome on this slide, and there's a condition on it that would significantly impact on the performance. So explaining a treatment protocol for lower back pain to a client. Just imagine the difference in the language that the student would have to use if they were discussing the protocol with um, other members of their team that was providing care to the patient. The use of jargon by a student during the assessment of this learning outcome would not demonstrate the desired performance. So let's build a learning outcome together. Here's the lead-in language. And please note, we're talking about um, the lesson level here. Look at that action verb. What level is that at? If you're thinking understanding, way to go. Now we're getting to the performance. This gets to the knowledge, skills, and attitudes that we want the student to demonstrate. And finally, the condition. This puts the parameters around the complexity of the language that the student can use and also suggests the need for empathy and caring in the delivery of the information. Okay, it's up to you now. Which of these learning outcomes is written correctly and why? Write your answer down. See if you can identify the verb, the performance, and any conditions. Stop the video until you're ready to move to the answer.
Let's try again. Same instructions. Which of these two learning outcomes is written correctly? And then identify the verb, performance, and conditions. Stop the video until you're ready to move on. Remember the last learning outcome at the beginning of the video was missing? Well, now it's your chance to write it. It's important that you're able to write learning outcomes. So we're going to write one together that reflects this performance. First, let's get this lead-in language right. We could have multiple learning outcomes for the lesson, so the lead-in language sets us up to list those varying learning outcomes. Which of these statements would you start with? The first statement seems to focus on what, you, what the students will be doing, a bit like an agenda perhaps. The third statement looks good, but it's focused on the course level. So it looks like the second um, statement is our best choice. The four key things we need to address in this section are choosing a verb that would reflect one or more domains of learning, that's at the right level of learning, that's observable, and that's measurable. Let's start with the domains of learning. Which domain do you think we're focusing on? If you pick the cognitive domain, that's correct. This learning outcome will reflect your knowledge of how to write learning outcomes. Next, what level of learning are we talking about? Is this a high or a low order thinking task? If you're not sure, take a look at some of these verbs. They're representative of the different levels of learning. What level of learning are we aiming for with this learning outcome? If you pick creating great work, this is the highest level of learning in the cognitive domain. But don't let that scare you. You've got the tools to get the job done. The next step is to pick an observable verb that's at the right level of learning. Pick one from the list on the right. If you need some help, there's a list of verbs on Cairo you can check out. Just stop the video and do a little research. If you picked right, great job. Understand and comprehend are not observable actions. Describe, explain, Compare and recommend are all observable actions, but they're not at that level of learning that we're going for, which is creating. Okay, we've got one more to do, measurable. Can we measure or evaluate your writing? We'll be able to once we add in those performances and conditions. So let's so let's do a quick recap of where we are. Here's the lead-in language and the verb that we've selected so far. Okay, so now we're ready to move on to performance and the conditions or criteria that will impact on performance. So what is it that we want to write? Pick one of these four options. I hope you picked learning outcomes. Otherwise, I'm just not sure what to do. If you're going to write an engagement announcement, well, congratulations on your happy event. But let's focus on this lesson again. It's all about learning outcomes, and I want you to write one. Here's a list of eight different conditions or criteria that well-written learning outcomes will meet. Take a careful look at this list, as you'll be using it to critique the learning outcomes you write for your lesson plan. You may also be asked to critique someone else's learning outcomes using this list. This list will be posted on Cairo. So how can we simplify this information so we can put it into our learning outcome? Here's four choices. Which one do you think would be best?
If you've picked that meets the eight criteria on the performance checklist, great job. It's specific, but it's concise. And we can always pull that performance checklist to determine if the student has actually met the learning outcome. You're doing a great job. You've worked hard towards achieving these learning outcomes. The next step is to complete the quiz on Cairo to demonstrate the first three outcomes. You need to earn a grade of at least 80% in order to successfully complete this task. You can repeat the quiz as many times as you need in order to meet this goal. You'll be doing some additional thinking about lesson planning and the first day of class. The deliverable for that activity is a lesson plan that will include your learning outcomes for the first day of class. So that's where you'll get to demonstrate your ability to write your own learning outcomes that meet the eight criteria on the checklist. This is a list of the resources that were used in creating this presentation, and they're all available on Cairo.